Hello, wonderful people. Welcome to English 6, Lesson 1. Um, are ghosts real? So that'll be interesting to talk about today. So our agenda for today, first we're going to talk about a scientific approach to the paranormal. We're going to talk about the main idea for the passage, are ghosts real? We're going to do a close reading for the passage, are ghosts real? And then we're going to do an exit ticket. The things you need to have out, you need out the passage, Are Ghosts Real? There's a PDF file linked to the assignment. You need notes and a piece of paper, and you need out your Microsoft Forms. So here are our objectives for today. There's four of them. Students will be able to summarize and synthesize ideas in a persuasive text. Students will be able to analyze the author's perspective and how he structured the text to convey his perspective. Students will be able to identify any flaws or weaknesses in an author's argument, and students will be able to articulate and support their own opinion on the existence of ghosts. So let's go over some key terms and vocabulary that we're going to need to understand as we read this passage. The first one is paranormal. Paranormal are events or occurrences that are beyond the scope of normal scientific understanding. So in the picture, you'll see like a UFO, an alien, a Sasquatch. So let's look at our sentence. I watched a show on paranormal investigations. The investigators were looking for ghosts and aliens. Spawn. To spawn means to produce or reproduce in large numbers. The people in line appeared to spawn. Before I knew it, there were hundreds behind me. So we often talk about this in like reproduction of animals, like the animals might spawn or create babies, um, or it can be more figurative like in this sentence. A seance. A seance is a meeting to receive communication from a spirit. My friends and I had a seance to see if we could communicate with a ghost. A psychic. A psychic is a person who claims to use extrasensory perception or ESP to identify information hidden from the normal senses. That's a long fancy word or definition, but basically a psychic is someone you might pay or you might go to and they might read your palm, they might look into a crystal ball, they might do a tarot card reading um, to talk or communicate with um, the things that you can't see. So my sentence says, I went to see a psychic to get advice on where to go to college. So the psychic might look into her crystal ball or do a tarot reading or something like that to <clears throat> figure out the answer to this question on where to go to college. Lore. Lore is a body of traditions and knowledge held by a particular group typically communicated by word of, mouth, word of mouth. The lore of the school was that there was a ghost that haunted the building at night. This is actually something that students have asked me about, Braze Oaks. I have never seen evidence of a ghost and I've, been work I've worked late at night, but you never know. So our skill focus for today, one of them <clears throat> is main idea. So the main idea is the most important point of a text Good readers determine the main idea by looking for details of the text. These and the supporting details describe or explain the main idea. So you can think of it as a table, like I'm working at a table right now. The top of it is your main idea, but your main idea cannot hold up without the support of those details. So supporting details are like the legs of the table. <clears throat> We're going to go over a few words that we're going to need to know for our persuasive text. We're going to go over these again tomorrow. It's not going to hurt you to hear them twice because you're going to need them for both articles that we're reading. So the claim is the thing that the author is trying to prove. Faulty reasoning. So if something is faulty, it's broken and it doesn't work. So faulty reasoning is when a claim or the point the author makes isn't quite true or doesn't make sense. 
So in this example, you can see this cat, it's not my cat, but it could be my cat, is in the bag and is hiding. And as the owner, I can clearly see, yep, that's where the cat is. But the cat is like, if I can't see you, you can't see me. I am completely hidden. The cat is wrong, right? The cat has faulty reasoning here, um, but it doesn't know that. And then opposing viewpoints. Opposing means opposite. And so an opposing viewpoint is when the author considers someone else's point of view or opinion. So we're going to begin by reading the first few paragraphs of Our Ghosts Real. <clears throat> if you believe in ghosts, you're not alone. Cultures all around the world believe in spirits that survive death to live in another realm. In fact, ghosts are among the most widely believed of the paranormal phenomenon. Millions of people are interested in ghosts, and in 2013, Harris Poll found that 43% of Americans believed in ghosts. The idea that dead, the dead remain with us in spirit is an ancient one, appearing in countless stories from the Bible to Macbeth. Macbeth is a Shakespeare play that you will probably read in high school, and it was written several hundred years ago. It even spawned, remember spawned means created, a folklore genre, ghost stories. Belief in ghosts is part of a larger web of related paranormal beliefs, including near-death experiences, life after death, and that got cut off, I can't see it, communication. The belief offers many people comfort. Who doesn't want to believe that a deceased family member, that deceased family members aren't looking out for us or with us in times of need? <laughs> All right, before we go on, let's look at this cartoon here. So the ghosts are sitting here, and this one's saying, this show kills me, and they're laughing. And what are they watching? Ghost hunters. We're going to come back to this cartoon when we look at our exit ticket. Today's secret word is Peppa Pig. Okay, at this point, you can either keep watching the video, we're going to finish reading the article together, and then go through the questions on the exit ticket. If I were you, I would do that because one of the questions on your exit ticket requires you to write a full paragraph. I'm going to walk you through what you need to do for that paragraph. However, if you feel confident in reading the article by yourself and taking the exit ticket and writing that paragraph, you may do that at this point. Okay, people have tried to or claimed to communicate with spirits for ages. In Victorian England, for example, it was fashionable for upper class ladies to hold seances in their parlors after tea and crumpets with, with friends. Okay, so the seance is when you have like that party of people who's trying to like talk to the ghosts or other spirits. Crumpets are just like fancy British cookies. <coughs> Ghost clubs dedicated to searching for ghostly evidence formed at well-known universities, including Cambridge and Oxford. And in 1882, the most famous organization, the Society for Psychical Research, was established. A woman named Eleanor Sidgwick was an investigator and later president of that group and could be considered the original female ghostbuster. In America during the late 1800s, Many psychic mediums claimed to speak to the dead, but were later exposed as fakes by skeptical investigators such as Harry Houdini. It wasn't until recently that ghost hunting became widespread and a widespread interest around the world. Much of this is due to the popular sci-fi cable TV series Ghost Hunters, now in its second decade of not finding good evidence for ghosts. The show inspired dozens of spin-offs and imitators, and it's not hard to see why the show is so popular. The basic idea is that anyone can look for ghosts. The two original stars were ordinary guys, plumbers in fact, who decided to look for evidence of spirits. Their message, you don't need to be a nerdy scientist or even have training in science or investigation. All you need is some, uh, basically a place, maybe a few gadgets from any electronic store, and maybe a few gadgets from any electronic store. If you look long enough, that got cut off. So any something or noise might be evidence of ghosts. The science and logic of ghosts. One difficulty in proving ghosts exist is that people think ghosts cause a wide variety of things. 
from a door closing on its own to missing keys to a cold area in a hallway to a vision of a dead relative. In a series of interviews, scientists Dennis and Michelle Waskell found that many people they interviewed were not sure if they had actually seen or felt a ghost. Many just thought they had experienced something weird or mysterious. Thus, many people who go on to re on record as claiming to have had a ghostly experience didn't necessarily see anything that most people would recognize as a classic ghost. And in fact, they may have had a completely different experience, experiences whose only common factor is that it could not be readily explained. There are many conflicting ideas about ghosts. For example, ghosts are ghosts physically solid or not? Either they can move through a solid object without disturbing them, or they can slam doors shut and throw objects across the room. According to logic and laws of physics, it's one or the other. Ghost hunters use many creative and unscientific methods to detect the spirit's presence, often including psychics. Virtually all ghost hunters claim to be scientific, and most give that appearance because they use high-tech scientific equipment such as Geiger counters, electric magnetic field, detectors, infrared cameras, and sensitive microphones. Yet none of this equipment has ever led to actually detecting a ghost. For centuries, people believed that flames turn blue in the presence of ghosts. Today, few people accept that bit of lore, but it's likely that many of the signs taken as evidence of ghost hunters will be seen as just as wrong and old fashioned centuries from now. Okay, we're almost done. Why many believe? People who believe in ghosts do so because of some personal experience. For example, a person might have grown up in a home where the existence of friendly spirits was a common belief. Some people may have had scary experience on a ghost tour or a local haunt. However, many people believe that support for the existence of ghosts can be found with science. It is widely claimed that Albert Einstein suggested a scientific basis for the reality of ghosts based on the first law of thermodynamics. If energy cannot be created or destroyed, but only change form, what happens to our body's energy when we die? Could our energy reappear as a ghost? It seems like a reasonable assumption, unless you understand basic physics. The answer is very simple, and not at all mysterious. After a person dies, the energy in his or her body goes where all organisms' energy goes after death, into the environment. The energy is released in the form of heat, and the body is transferred into the animals that eat us, i.e. wild animals if we are left unburied, or worms and bacteria if we are buried, and the plants that absorb us. There is no bod bodily energy that survives death to be detected with popular ghost hunting devices. So basically what this is saying is that science does not prove that there's extra energy left over after we die to be turned into a ghost. <clears throat> if ghosts are real, then their existence will, like all other scientific discoveries, be discovered and proven true by scientists through controlled experiments, not by weakened ghost hunters wandering around abandoned houses in the dark late at night with cameras and flashlights. Ultimately, ghost hunting is not about the evidence. If it was, the search would have been able to discover ghosts years ago. Instead, it's about having fun with friends, telling stories, and in the enjoyment of pretending, pretending that the search, I don't know, it got cut off again, I apologize. Pretending the searching edge of the unknown. After all, everyone loves a good ghost story. Okay, so do you agree with the investigator's perspective in the article? So pause, what is their perspective? Do they think ghosts are real or not real? Right, they think they're not real. So do you agree that ghosts are not real or do you think ghosts are real? You're gonna answer this question using a complete sentence. <clears throat> Which statement below represents the main idea of the article? So remember, main idea, what is the article mostly about? Is it mostly about Searching for ghosts is dangerous to individuals and the scientific community. I don't think so, but let's keep reading. While there is no scientific basis for the existence of ghosts, the communal experience of sharing stories and experiences with the paranormal is valuable and enduring. Okay, well, if I was going based on this first part, I would say that that works 
I'm not sure about this second part. Anyone belie who believes in ghosts is wasting their time and money while also harming sci the scientific community. That's a little too harsh of an opinion. While we haven't found scientific evidence for ghosts yet, that does not necessarily mean they don't exist. Okay. Well, between B and D, while there is no scientific basis for the existence of ghosts, the communal experience of sharing stories and experiences with the paranormal is valuable and enduring, or why we haven't found scientific evidence for ghosts yet, that does not necessarily mean they don't exist. I think that you can figure out between B and D which one is the best answer. Okay, which piece of text evidence from the article best supports the main idea statement you selected for question two? So hopefully you picked B because that was the right answer, right? So even though we don't have any evidence that they are real, a lot of people still enjoy telling ghost stories and things like that, and that's a good thing. Ultimately, ghost hunting is not about the evidence. Instead, it's about having fun with friends. That could work. After a person dies, the energy in his or her body goes where all organisms' energy goes after death into the environment. That can't be right. That does not make sense. Ghost hunters use many creative and unscientific methods to detect the spirit's presence, often including psychics. Mm. Okay, well, this supports half of it, but not all of it. One difficulty in proving ghosts exist is that people think ghosts cause ghosts cause a wide variety of things. Okay, so between A and C, which of this text evidence matches answer choice B from the previous question? All right, in paragraph three, the word skeptical means, and I put paragraph three right here for us to look at. So I'm gonna highlight that sentence. Um, in America during the late 1800s, many psychic mediums claimed to speak to the dead, but were later exposed as fakes by skeptical investigators such as Harry Houdini. So basically what this sentence is saying is that there were a lot of people at this time that were like, yes, I'm a ghost hunter, I can speak to the dead, I can communicate with your loved one that has passed. But then when people investigated it, they were like, hmm that's not true you're not you're not actually doing what you're saying you're doing so based on that what do we think the word skeptical means does it mean artistic no that doesn't make sense based on that sentence doubtful so for later exposed as fakes by doubtful investigators that could work but we're later exposed as fakes by educated investigators maybe or hesitant but we're later exposed as fakes by hesitant investigators i don't think the investigators were hesitant so between doubtful and educated which word makes more sense in that sentence okay which of the following statements best explains how paragraph nine supports the author's argument so let's look at paragraph nine it seems like a likely assumption if you understand physics Okay, so this is the paragraph that's talking about energy. There's not enough energy after we die, like it goes into heat and that goes into the environment and our body gets decomposed and is eaten by animals or bacteria, right? So that's that paragraph. It is nearly impossible to create a controlled environment to study ghosts. Is that what this paragraph is saying? People who believe in ghosts don't respect science. People who hunt for ghosts are doing their best to gain respect with the scientific community. We can only say ghosts are real if they are proven in a controlled scientific environment. So I know it can't be B because that's not true. And I know that it can't be C. So between A and D, what does this paragraph show us? How does this support the author's argument. 
Which piece of text evidence shows that the author has considered an opposing viewpoint? Remember, opposing is opposite point of view. After all, everyone loves a good ghost story. Is that the opposite point of view or is that his point of view? There is no bodily energy that survives death to be detected with popular ghost hunting devices. Mm. It seems like a reasonable assumption, unless you understand basic physics. So is this, this is the opposite point of view. It wasn't until recently that ghost hunting became widespread around the world. So based on this, I can conclude that C is the opposing or opposite viewpoint. Which of the author's arguments is based on faulty reasoning? So their logic does not make sense. If you believe in ghosts, you're not alone. Well, they said that lots of people believe in ghosts. So that's not faulty reasoning. The idea that the dead remain with us in spirit is an ancient one, appearing in countless stories from the Bible to Macbeth. Can I prove that? Or is that faulty reasoning? Well, if I can point to it in stories, it seems like I could prove it. There are many conflicting ideas about ghosts. Conflicting means different. People who believe in ghosts do so because of some personal experience. Do you think every single person who believes in ghosts has had personal experience with one? I don't know. I don't know if we could prove that. So based on that, we know it can't be that one. What is faulty reasoning. Which piece of text evidence from the article is related to the cartoon at the beginning? Remember, I put the cartoon right here. It got cut off, but the ghosts are watching Ghost Hunters and they think it's really funny. People have tried to or claimed to communicate with spirits for ages. The basic idea of the show Ghost Hunters is that anyone could look for ghosts. You don't need to be a nerdy scientist or even have training to in science or investigation. People who believe in ghosts do so because of some personal experience. I don't think that's why they think it's funny. The idea that the dead remain with us in spirit is an ancient one appearing in countless stories from the Bible to Macbeth. So which one of these, remember they're watching Ghost Hunters, so which one of these has to do with the show Ghost Hunters? That will be your right answer. Which of the following statements best explains how the last paragraph of the article contributes to the overall argument the author makes? Okay, let's go back and look at that last paragraph. Ultimately, ghost hunting is not about the evidence. If it was, the search would have been abandoned long ago. Instead, it's about having fun with friends, telling stories, and the enjoyment of pretending they are searching the edge of the unknown. After all, everyone loves a good ghost story. Okay, so what does this paragraph have to do with the rest of the paragraphs? Even though the author discredits current evidence of ghosts as unscientific, the author acknowledges a positive communal aspect of ghosts. So this means like, even though science doesn't prove it, you can still have fun with friends. Since there is no scientific basis for ghosts, we should stop investigating them. Is the author saying we should stop investigating them? No. Ghosts are, ghost stories are fun to tell with friends, but investigating ghosts will not be fun because it is unscientific. Ghost stories aren't scary since ghosts aren't real, but they can still be fun. Okay, it's not that one. So between A and C, what do you think is the best answer? Okay, now this is where it gets a little tricky. What is your perspective on the existence of ghosts? So you are going to be writing a full paragraph. So that means you need five or more sentences. You need a thesis statement. Your thesis statement is literally, yes, I believe in ghosts. No, I don't believe in ghosts. Then, after you have your thesis statement, you need to give me reasons and then you need to support those reasons. So let me show you my example. In my opinion, ghosts are not real. I have never seen a ghost or encountered something scary that would lead me to believe that ghosts are real. While there are many TV shows and books claiming to have evidence that ghosts are real, many of these facts do not hold up to real science. 
I believe that if ghosts were real, many more people would have seen them or experienced strange things. If science produces more evidence to show that ghosts do exist, I might change my mind. But based on what we know now, there is not enough evidence to prove this fact. So I have my thesis up here. I do not believe ghosts are real. Then I have a bunch of sentences that support that fact. You can use examples from the article. You can use your personal experiences to prove this, but you have to have five or more sentences. This is your opinion. So if you tell me, I believe ghosts are real because, and then you give me good evidence for it, you'll still get a good grade on it. However, if you just say, yes, ghosts are real, that's zero points. No ghosts are not real, and you stop there, zero points. Because I'm asking you for five or more sentences. All right, wonderful job today. That was a tricky article, but I hope you enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty interesting. And as always, I love you. Be good. Have a wonderful day.